is just the start of the Big 12 and Power 5 talk to come. Listen to JJ and Alex Monday on your drive home. Afternoons from 3 to 6 on 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. That's right. You can listen to Alex Terry every single weekday. KSL Sports Zone with Jeremiah Jensen. They're holding it down on 97.5. The KSL Sports Zone, 3 to 7 every single weekday. You can hear me, Cougar Nation, on Mondays in basketball season. We'll be taking your phone calls during the hot start to Cougar Hoops and also Cougar Sports Saturday with Matt Biamonte, noon to 3. Some takeaways hey, from the – B- I was going to say BYU and Utah basketball this week, right? Isn't that what we're looking at? Is that kind of the big one uh, going yes. on at the Huntsman Center? Saturday, going to be a big one. It's, it should be a lot of fun. You know what that means? Heavy trash talk as of the very first basketball version of Cougar Nation tomorrow night. I'll predict it for you guys, so I'm excited for you dudes. We're, we're going to have a lot of fun. And, and this show is always brought to you by Macy's Grocery Store, your local uh, vegetable, fruits and vegetables from your local farms, local brands, Macy's Happy Shopping. Some takeaways from the Big 12 football season in 2023. Alex, what, what's kind of some of your key takeaways? Yeah, I think that overall I, I can't help but look and go, Man, the quarterback talent was not great. Um, if you're going to look at – I mean, and you don't – listen, we all know the best running backs came out of this conference, right? Like, there are, lot, there are lots of good ones across the country, but a lot of them came out of this Big 12. And But you don't want to be the conference known for, you know, being the RBUs. You know, like everybody wants – the reason that the Pac-12 was so sexy for everybody else this year was – you had the Heisman Trophy winning returning quarterback, and he was a dog compared to the other guys, right? Like, this was a quarterback's conference of the Pac-12, and frankly, you need that. And I don't think that you have a lot of great quarterbacks in the Big 12. I think Quinn Ewers is, is starting to become something special. I wonder if he – is he going to end up coming back to Texas next year? I mean, that that's really the crazy thing. And he's not even going to be in the conference. So that's, that's what I'm saying is <laughs> talent-wise – that's a guy that people look at and they go, yeah, and then what? What's going to happen in this conference? I mean, Will Howard, uh, people are talking about this guy is the bee's knees in the transfer portal. I told you, and we've talked about it, I don't like that dude as somebody who you're going to you know, hang your hat on. But I think that the quarterback problems across the conference are, are pretty uh, – injuries were also an issue across the conference. Uh, but I think overall, top to bottom, there were shocking moments in the conference. There were teams that underperformed. There were teams that we had no idea that they had the talent that they did, and they showed up to play. And the newcomers uh, were kind of right along what newcomers do, Mitch, which is to underperform their first couple of years. It's not an easy thing to make that transition into Power 5 football. No question. And when you talk about the quarterbacks, I mean, there was there was no QBs from the programs that are going to continue in the Big 12 next year that had over 3,000 yards in the regular season. Alan Bowman exceeded that mark with the 13th game yesterday. But uh, Donovan Smith, he was number two from Houston. You're, you're looking at Donovan Smith as one of the best QBs in the nation? No. Right. Like, I mean, no, it, no it was a week. It was a down year. I would probably say out of the returning programs in the league, Rocco Beck from Iowa State, who was the freshman of the year in the conference, he's probably maybe the, the, the big name. But still, that doesn't kind of leaves me a little empty moving forward right, exactly. with the league. But, you know, one of the takeaways that I had, and, and Brett Yormark spoke to the media yesterday, and he noted this, and it does stand out. There, there was great parity in the league this year. I think going into the final week of the regular season, there was still seven teams out of the 14 that, that mathematically had a chance to go to Arlington and play in the Big 12 title. And this was a wild league that had – so much entertainment as far as, you know, if you follow this league and you have programs that you care about in this conference. But I do wonder, how, do, how does the Big 12 kind of reach some of the, the other conferences, some of the other fan bases that it becomes a, a national league where you feel like, okay, I'm an ACC fan, but i got to know what's happening in the Big 12 because it has a ripple effect on what this or our program is going to do or our league is going to do. That, that's one of the challenges. And maybe the 12-team playoff helps those efforts. Uh, but, you know, there was great parity in this conference, and it was a lot of fun because, let me tell you, I mean, every Saturday, every Sunday morning when we're putting together these power rankings, it was like, whoa, we are <laughs> so off from last week because there was, you know, the bottom half all won. It was just, it was a wild league this year in the Big 12 Conference, but even though the the, the projected winner ended up ultimately winning it. Yeah, and, I, and, and that's the part, too, that was a little disappointing is it, I mean, TCU, obviously, that's a storyline that you go, man, they go from being the national 
runner-up, right, in the college football yeah. playoff to being what they were, which was, you know, I mean, not even making a bowl game, right? Uh, and yet at the same time, BOU fans are like, yeah, they killed us down in Fort Worth, right? <laughs> and so the, the week to week, you didn't know what you were going to get, which was, you know, I think about that Oklahoma State lost by six touchdowns to UCF, and I go, oh, my goodness, what is this league even, right? right? Like, there's no version of that in other leagues, right? Like, or at least there hasn't been. Where is there a league where, you know, the second or, you know, the – Imagine Alabama getting their one loss this year was by six touchdowns. There's no freaking way, right? And so that's the part where I think that a lot of folks look and they go, hey, uh, what's going on What's going on in this league? Uh, because you could say parity, but you could also say uh, very inconsistent. Now, where they are consistent, I, I would say some of, the, some of the, the talent, though, that you have on the defensive side of the football, like the guys that – the, the guys that took on BYU sometimes, and this is all, you know, we saw the, so many of these games from that perspective, right? But the trenches were just an awful place to live, man. Like, the, those, there are some dogs in this in this conference. Those guys, like, attack you, man. Like, and, and so that's the part, too, where you go, all right, these guys compete with anybody when it comes to talent coming out of Texas, coming out of Oklahoma, coming out of even Florida, right? I mean, they, they, they know how to do it. And so from that sense, I think that the, that the Big 12 – is always going to be in pretty good shape because they're always going to be in the heart uh, recruiting-wise in a place where they're going to be able to draw from some really, really good places that, that great talent comes from. One last thing before we before we get to break. I, I was thinking, too, you know, Jormark brought this up in his kind of season wrap-up. 88% capacity in the stadiums. That's been kind of the calling card of the Big 12 when you Ooh, think nice. about future media rights. And this league, the fan bases, they care. And, and yep. I think that yep. is something that you do have momentum building in and, and I building on. And I think there was a lot of excitement for the newcomers. I think these fan bases like Oklahoma State, they wanted to see BYU. They wanted to see Houston. Uh, I think there was some excitement there. You hope – that it continues in the future. But that was a good sign that, you know, with so much change that they were still showing up at the gate. And it's one of the, the yeah. great things about this conference going forward is that they do have passionate followings. The challenge is going to be can you continue to grow it? And I think your mark's the right guy to get that done to, to continue to elevate the audience so this brand of the Big 12 kind of reaches new audiences. But we got to take a break, though. Hour number two coming up next. We'll get to – the look ahead of the 16-team Big 12, the big storylines, the power rankings. It's going to be a lot of fun, so sit in. We're going to get talk the four corners and the Big 12 next here on First and 12, and it's powered by KSL Sports.